The verbs ser and estar both mean to be, but they're used in different situations. This tutorial is to help you understand when you should use the verb ser and when you should use the verb estar. Ser is used to talk about characteristics, attributes, people's occupation, their nationality or origin, and also it's used to tell time. Now there are some other uses of ser that you'll learn later on, but for now these are the important ones that you should be concerned with. Just a few examples of these things. Characteristics might be things like so-and-so is friendly or easy to get along with. An attribute might be a physical description, tall, pretty, blonde, redheaded, things like that. Your occupation, of course. My father is an accountant. Your nationality or origin. He is Cuban. She is from Arkansas. That type of thing. And telling time. Of course, in English, we would say it is 245 or whatever. So those are examples of things that we would use the verb ser for. Estar is used to talk about condition, location, and emotion. Again, there are other uses of the verb estar that you will learn later on, but for now these are the three important things. Let's look at examples of those. Condition would be something like, the lamp is broken. Uh, it might also be, they are lost. Being lost would be a condition. Location, we are at school. He is at the airport, that type of thing. Any motion, I am happy, she is sad, they are relieved, whatever the case may be. If we're talking about emotion, we're probably going to go with estar. Now there are different ways to keep these things straight. For me, the easiest way is to just memorize this list for estar because it's a shorter list. I can keep those three things in mind, condition, location, emotion. And I know that if I'm using to be, if it's condition, location, or emotion, I'm going to use estar. If it's not one of those three things, then chances are I'm going to use said instead. Some teachers use this little rhyme to help their students remember how you feel and where you are, that is when you use estar. What you're like and where you're from is when you use the other one. If that helps you, you may want to memorize it. It's not quite as all-inclusive as the list that we saw a minute ago, but it is easy to remember and it can be very helpful for you. Let's go ahead and try a few practice sentences to see if we've got it down. Here's one. Are you from around here? Pause the video, take a second and think about it, and then I'll tell you where this goes. Okay, are you from around here? That's origin. So that would be said. Let's look at another example. We are friendly. Again, pause, take a minute to think about it, and then I'll tell you where this goes and why. We are friendly. That's a characteristic. Characteristics are said. Here's another example. The kids are happy. Think about it. Pause if you need to. Being happy is a condition or an emotion, I should say. It's an emotion. That is estar. He is very smart. Take a minute to think about it. That's a characteristic or an attribute, so we would put that in the ser column. Maria is at the store. That's giving us Maria's location. We use estar for location. Jose is sick today. That's a condition. Estar is used to talk about conditions. It is 3 o'clock. Telling time, we use the verb ser. And one more example. Mr. Smith is a teacher. Of course, there we're talking about occupation. We use said to talk about occupation. So again, a quick recap. Estar, to talk about condition, location, and emotion. Said, to talk about characteristics, attributes, occupation, nationality, and origin, and telling time.